Chapter 1, Old Testament, Joshua chapter 1, we're starting, we're going to read in unison from Ephesians chapter 4 from the NIV, NIV Bible, okay? If you got an NIV, raise your hand, or if you got a New King James, amen, we're reading from the NIV, NIV, New International Version, all right, not the MIV, not the Mexican International Version, the NIV, hallelujah, NIV. Most of you got, looks like you got the New King James, so I'll read it first in the NIV and then I'll go back through the New King James, amen? All right, Ephesians chapter four. When you're there, say amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter four. How many of you know that the Bible says we've got to live up to the calling we have received? Each of us has a calling in our life, Barbaro. Each of us has a calling in our life. Uh, we're going to talk today about Joshua, Joshua's calling, amen. As Moses dies, Joshua takes his place as the leader of the Israelite nation, amen, and leads them into preparing to lead them into the promised land. But I want to share something important with you today because each of us here has a calling. And listen, it's not enough for us to have a calling, amen. We've got to be doers of the word of God. Amen. Not amen. just hearers only deceiving yourselves, but doers of the word of God. Let the church say amen. 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 You see, blessing comes from the doing. The blessing comes from the doing, not just the hearing. You get blessed when you hear the word, amen. But how about if you put that word into action? That's right. Amen. That's why we call ourselves love in action. Amen. We are people of action doing the word of God. Let the church say amen. 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 Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to read it in unison together from the NIV. Hallelujah. From the NIV. And then I'll go back and read it in the New King James. From the NIV, we're reading in unison. Ready? Everybody, go. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Does everybody have a Bible? Raise your hand if you need a Bible. Don't take my word for it, read it for yourself. Know it for yourself, do it for yourself. In the NIV, let's all read together, here we go. One more time, from the beginning, ready, set, go. As a prisoner for the Lord then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. Let the church say amen. amen. Okay, if you got a New King James, Ephesians chapter 4, let's read it one more time in the New King James. I want to make sure everybody gets this. New King James, Ephesians chapter 4. When you're there, say amen, somebody. Amen. I want you to look at your neighbor this morning and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Amen. Don't just sit there. Don't just sit there. Participate. Participate. Yeah, be a participator. Amen. Amen. This is this is your this is your opportunity for change. Yes. This is your opportunity for deliverance. Yes. This is your opportunity to see God move in your life. Yes. This is your chance, amen, to reach out to God and let God reach out to you. This is your chance, amen, to make a difference in your own life. You are a willing participant to your own destruction. Be a willing participant to your own healing. Let the church say amen. amen. Look at your neighbor this morning and say, neighbor. neighbor. Hey, neighbor. hey, neighbor. Just do what God said to do. Come on, look at the neighbor on the other side. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Hey, neighbor. Hey, neighbor. Just do what God said to do. All right, here we go. Ephesians, Ephesians 4, verse number 1 in the New King James. Everybody reading together. Here we go. Ready, set, go. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all loneliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all 
through all and in you all. Let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap offering this morning. Hallelujah. Turn with me. Let's go to the left. We're going to go to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. So Deuteronomy, Joshua, Old Testament. Joshua chapter 1. How, how many of you know that the Lord is so good at All calling time. us? Amen. And then talking to us. Yeah. And how many of you know that God don't call nobody he don't want to talk to? Yeah. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Here's, here's what I want to say to you this morning, church, because this is important for you to understand. When God is speaking to you this morning, you have an option of what you're going to do with what you hear. You can submit and win or you can resist and lose. Let me say that one more time. You can submit to God's word and win or you can resist God's word and lose. Let me say that one more time, just so y'all, just so y'all can get it. Amen. Let me. I'm not speaking ebonics. I'm not speaking a foreign language. Come on, I'm, I'm speaking in plain English. Amen. I'm speaking. I'm speaking in plain English this morning. Let me say it one more time. You can submit to God's word and the leading of the Holy Spirit and win. Yes. Or you can resist the word and resist the Spirit of God and lose. How many of you are tired of losing? Yes. I'm tired of losing, man. I'm tired of losing my clothes. I'm tired of losing my tent. I'm tired of losing my shoes. I'm tired of losing everything somebody gives me. I turn around and it's gone. Come on, somebody steals it right from your tent. They steal it right from the tracks. They steal it right from all the stuff that you've accumulated. Amen. And I got, I got tired of starting from zero all over again. I got tired of starting over all over again. Amen. I had to resist. I had to, I had to stop resisting what God was doing in my life and then submit to God so I could win. Let the church say amen. amen. Look at your neighbor this morning and say, neighbor, neighbor. or neighbor, oh, neighbor. You're, a winner. you're a winner. Start doing what God says. Doing what God Come on, look at the neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor. neighbor. Hey, neighbor. Hey, neighbor. You're a winner. You're a winner. But you got to start doing what God says. But you got to start doing Come on, what God give the Lord a clap offering this morning. Hallelujah. Many of us are going through situations in our life where we hear God speaking to us and we know what God has told us to do, amen, but we still resist the voice of God. Some of you come to church to get the latest word from God, but you still haven't done the last word he gave you. I am preaching. Yeah. You come to church on Sunday morning to get the latest word from God because the Spirit is alive here. Yes, yes. And the Spirit is speaking here. Yes. And the Spirit is talking to you here. Yes. You come to get the latest word of God. You come to get refreshed in your heart, refreshed Amen. in your spirit, refreshed in your mind. You come and hear, want to hear what God has to say, say, but you still haven't done the last thing he told you to do. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. you've got to read, gotta read and, take heed. and take heed. Oh, look at the neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor, neighbor. you got to pray and you got to obey. And you gotta obey. Oh, come on, give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. Yeah, you can submit and win or you can resist and lose. As we get into our story this morning in Joshua chapter 1, I want to just tell you that at the end of Deuteronomy here, the previous book, Moses has died. He lived to 120 years old. He was leading the nation of Israel for 40 years in the wilderness. The reason why uh, they lasted 40, wandered 40 years in the wilderness is because they disobeyed God. They disobeyed God. God told them, go in. Go take the land. I've already given the land to you. It's your place of rest, your place of peace. But all you got to do is go in and take it. Amen. So Moses sent 12 spies to go spy out the land. Go tell me what you see and let's figure out how we can take this. The spies came back after some time. Amen. And 10 of the spies said, no, 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 no. We won't be able to take it. 
The Canaanites are too strong for us. We, we are like grasshoppers compared to them. They are giants in the land. But Joshua and Caleb, just like my wife said a moment ago when she was up here, she said out of the 10 spies, two of them came back and said, you know what? I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. I don't care who's in the land. If God said we can take the land, we can take the land. Let the church say amen. Amen. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Yeah. So they went an 11 day journey from, from Egypt to the land of Canaan, 11 days, and they could have walked right into the land and taken the land. But because of their disobedience, because of their unbelief, because of their own sinful and wicked ways, they refused to do what God said to do, and they ended up wandering in the desert for 40 years. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. That's a long time. That's a long time. To disobey God. To disobey God. Yeah, 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 because here's what God has for you. Here's what God has for you today, church. How long will you wander in the desert? How long will you let your life be a desert experience? Because here's what God does. God killed an entire generation of unbelievers. And until the next generation rose up and understood how to uh, trust God, how to obey God, and how to do what God said, those are the ones who got the inheritance of going into the land. The generation that didn't believe, the generation that disobeyed, the generation that hung on to their wickedness, the generation that wanted to do what they wanted to do after they saw all God's miracles, they're the ones who died in the wilderness. My wife said it's such a, such, a, such, a, such a beautiful thing a minute ago. Don't let this temporary experience, this temporary season that you're in, don't let this be the season you die in. Don't let this be the season where you lose everything. Don't let this be the season where you keep starting from zero over and over and over again because you refuse to obey the word of God. Let the church say amen. amen. Come on, look at your neighbor this morning and say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, neighbor, you gotta hear the word, you gotta hear the and, word. and you gotta do the word. And you gotta do Come on, look at the neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor, neighbor. hey neighbor, hey, you gotta hear the word, you gotta hear the and word. you gotta do the word. Do the Come word. on, give the Lord a clap offering this morning, hallelujah. Let me just tell you, church, that in, in our day and our culture today, we think that success is telling people what to do, yeah. and they do it. Yeah. There's an essence of power, amen, that when we, when we own a business or we own something, amen, where we, where, we, uh, where we can say something to someone and as long as they do it, there's power in your word. So the world sees power as being able to tell people what to do and they do it, uh, telling people something and they obey it. But God sees success the exact opposite. He doesn't care about how influential you are. He doesn't care about how powerful you are. He doesn't care about how you speak to others, amen. God wants to speak to you and wants you to do what he says. Let the church say amen. amen. Success amen. in the kingdom is not how many people you're in control over. Success in the kingdom is how well do you respond when God speaks to you. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, let me tell you something, church. We are not responsible as Christians. We are not responsible for the lives that are changed from our preaching. Listen to me carefully. I'm not responsible for the results of what I say. I'm responsible to God for doing what he told me to do. In the world, Joe, uh, Joey, in the world, amen, the world judges success by how many dollars you have, how many houses you have, how many cars you have. Uh, by all the things you accumulate in business. That's how the world judges success. But God judges success, success by your level of obedience. What good is it, hallelujah, what good is it, church, if the whole world knows your name, but heaven doesn't know your name? Oh. I am preaching. I am preaching. Yes. What good is it if you're a, a star out here on the streets? Gang star, come on, track star, whatever it is out here on the street. What good is it if you're a star out here on the streets, but heaven don't even know your name? I would rather heaven know my name and be a nobody out here. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Joshua is taking over the reins of the nation of Israel. And God speaks to him and tells him, listen, 
You've got to be strong and courageous. I'm giving you a word. I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to tell you how to be successful. I'm going to show you everything that you need to know. All you got to do is obey my word. Come on, look at your neighbor this morning and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Read. Read. And take heed. And take heed. Pray. Pray and, obey. and obey. Come on, look at the neighbor on the other side. Say, neighbor, neighbor. all you got to do is read and take heed. All you got to do is pray and obey. Let me pray and then we'll jump in the word. Father, thank you, Lord God, this morning, Lord God, for the power of your word today. Lord, your word is life. Your word is truth. The Bible says, my words are spirit and they are truth, Jesus said. And so, Father, as we get into the word today, Lord God, help us, Lord God, to understand what does it mean? What does it mean to follow your word and not care what anyone else says? What does it mean to follow your word, Lord God? Because I'd rather be esteemed in your eyes than in the world's eyes. What does it mean, Lord God, to obey and to do what you've called us to do? Lord, bless the reading of your word today. We thank you, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Everybody says? Amen. 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 Come on, give the Lord a clap offering this morning. Look at your neighbor this morning and tell him, neighbor. Neighbor. Tighten down your weave. Lace up your shoes. Lace up your shoes. We're getting in the word of God this morning. Hallelujah. 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 You guys love Jesus? Yeah. Yes. All right, all right. Here we go. Joshua chapter 1. The nation of Israel is camped on the east side of the Jordan River. The promised land is on the west side of the Jordan River. Moses has died, and now the Lord is going to speak to Joshua this morning. He's giving them his commission. Yeah. Amen. To take the nation of Israel into the promised land. Now we just read a moment ago in Ephesians 4.1, Paul says, live up to the calling which you have received in the Lord. Each of us has a call, amen, to listen to the voice of God and then to obey the word of God. Let the church say amen. amen. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 1, reading from the NIV. Let's read it. Uh, here, here we go. I'll read it. Here we go. After the death of Moses... The servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, who said to Joshua? The Lord. the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, he said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about, about to give them to the nation of Israel. Verse number three, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Verse number four, your territory will ex extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, and all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. Verse number five, no one, everybody say no one. No one. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let me tell you, church, the Bible says this. That if God be for you, who can be against you? Who can be against you? If God is for you, then who can be against you? Let me say that one more time. If God is for you, then who can be against you? Let the church say amen. amen. But God cannot be for you unless you are for God. Let me say that one more time. God cannot be for you unless you are for God. Osa, Osa, let me say that one more time. God cannot be for you unless you are for God. Let the church say amen. amen. And as Joshua is there listening to the word of God, he's listening to the spirit of God speak to him. He's telling him, listen, this is your commission. You are to take the nation of Israel into the promised land. And when you take them there, you're going to have to fight. And when you get in there, you're going to have to challenge some of the people that live there. And you're going to have to utterly destroy everything that is wicked and sinful in your way. But I'll tell you what, Joshua, every place you put your foot, I'm going to give it to you. And I'm going to be with you the entire way. And no one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. Give the Lord a clap off for this Amen. morning. Hallelujah. Oh. This is powerful, watch this. Because here's the condition of victory. Here's the condition of power. Here's the condition of taking the land and taking the territory. 
you got to do what God says to do. Let the church say amen. 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 Come on, look at your neighbor this morning and say, neighbor, amen. you got to hear the word, you got to hear the word. then you've got to do the word. You got to do the Come word. on, look, say it one more time. You've got to hear the word, you got to hear the word. then you've got to do the word. You the one more time, church. You've got to hear the word, Dave, you the then you've got to do the word. Let the church say amen. And look what he says here, verse number five. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you, and I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. Give the Lord a clap offering today. Hallelujah. This is the promise from God. This is the promise from God, church, that if we hear the word of God, and we do the word of God, not only will you have victory, but the Lord says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. How many of you here feel like you're forsaken? How many of you have ever felt like, man, where is God when I need him? Where is God when I'm crying out to him? Where is God when I'm struggling with my life? Where is God when so many things are happening to me? Where is God when all this stuff is going on? Hallelujah. But God says, when you hear my voice and you obey my word, no matter what things look like and no matter what it feels like, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Let the church say amen. Come on, tell your neighbor that's good news, neighbor. That's good news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, Joshua's key to success, amen, was not going in and taking the land. Joshua's key to success, amen, was his submission to God. I said at the very beginning, listen to me, church, you can submit and win, or you can resist and lose. The choice is yours. I personally had to get tired of losing everything all the time, man. I wanted to do things my way, and it was my way or the highway. Come on, somebody say amen to that. And I got tired of starting from zero all the time. I had to listen to the word of God and see what God was going to do in my life. Look what he says here, verse number six. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land that I swore to their forefathers to give unto them. Everybody say this out loud. Be strong, be strong and be courageous. And be, courageous. Be, strong be strong and be courageous. And be courageous. One more time. Be strong. Be strong and be courageous. Be courageous. I want to say this to you, church. This Christian life is not an easy life. It seems like when you come to the Lord, everything comes against you. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. It seems like the challenges grow bigger, the trials are stronger. It seems like you got to go through more stuff. But let me tell you, church, one thing. God never promised you that walking with him was going to be easy. He says it will be worth it. There's a big difference. He said it's not going to be easy. He says, but I'm not going to change the circumstances. I'm going to change you in the middle of your circumstances. Oftentimes, you and I are calling on God, saying, Lord, change these circumstances for me. And God says, no, can't you see? I'm using the circumstances to change you. Hallelujah. I'm using the trials. I'm using the challenges. I'm using the difficulties. Not to change them, but so that they will change you. Come on. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. That's a bad Jesus right there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me say this to you, church. Listen to me. God's commands are not optional. Let me say that one more time. God's commands are not optional. They are not suggestions. They are commandments. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. And so when God commands something for you, he wants you to do it. Because his, this is what he does afterward. He commands the blessings when you obey. He commands the blessings to come upon you when you walk in his word. He commands the blessings to come upon you when you obey his word. He commands the blessings to come upon you. Amen. What if the blessing said, oh, I don't think so today. Uh -oh. I don't want to bless you today. Uh -oh. No, no, no. The commands, amen. Just like when the parents give their children commands, hey, go cut the grass. Hey, throw out the trash. Hey, do this. Clean your room. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, when you don't do it, what happens? Whooping. Yeah, you get the pow-pows. Yeah. You get the pow-pows. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
So say this out loud. God's commands, God's commands are not optional. Are not optional. Say it one more time. God's commands, God's commands are, not optional. are not optional. Let's read it one more time. Verse number six. Look what he says. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers. Everybody say strong and courageous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not a, this this walk is not for the weak people. This is for strong people. You got to be strong and courageous to do what God says to do, especially in the face of challenges. Especially in the face of trials. You got to be strong and courageous, but what will God do when you obey his word? He will bring the blessings and the the victory. Let the truth say amen. Amen. All right, watch this. Watch this. Verse number 7. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn to it from the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Oh. Amen. How many of you want to be successful in life? Wherever you go. The Lord will command the blessing. The Lord will command the blessing to meet you there when you keep God's word first. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Say first, say this out loud. Say, hearing the word, come into agreement with the word, and then do the word. Say it one more time. Hear, hear the word, agree with the word, then do the word. And the Bible says right here, then wherever you go, you will have good success. Let me just tell you guys, listen. Success in this world, amen, is when people see how blessed you are. The Bible says blessing is increase. It's the fatness of God. That's the blessing of God in your life. Let the church say amen. Some of us are blessed and we didn't even realize how blessed we were. Somebody say amen to that. But then when we realize God is the one who's blessing me, God is the one who's taking care of me, God is the one who's meeting my needs. God is the one who's making a way where there was no way. Amen. Do you realize how powerful God is? Let the church say amen. 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 Oh, say it one more time. If God be for me, who can be against me? Who can be against me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch what he says here. Verse number eight. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth, but meditate on it day and night so that you can be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Let the church say amen. Amen. How many of you here, by show of hands, you're ready to be successful in life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all want to be successful. But we don't all want to obey God's word. Somebody say amen to that. Yeah, this is what he says. Listen. He says, don't let this book leave your mouth. In other words, speak the word of God as much as you can. Let the word of God be on the tip of your tongue. And then he says, don't look to the right or to the left, but meditate on the word. So keep your mind on the word of God. So keep your mind on the word of God. Keep your mouth full of the word of God. Amen. And then do the word of God. Let the church say amen. Amen. Oh, watch what he says one more time. Verse number eight. Let me read it one more time. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Keep the word of God on the tip of your tongue. When challenges come your way, speak the word of God over it. Oh, come on. I said this the other day. Let me just share it with you. This is powerful. You and I use words to communicate. Listen to me, Barbara. You and I use words to communicate, Dave. Amen? But God uses words to create. The Bible says in Genesis, amen, that God spoke the word and it happened immediately. Amen. God is a creator. He's the great creator. Hallelujah. He creates good things. Amen. So here's what happens with you and I. You and I talk about stuff and complain about life. We complain about our kids. We complain about those darn grandkids. We complain about our situation. We complain about not having work. We complain about all these things. Amen. But when you put God's word on it, when you speak God's word, rather than complaining, you bring life to the something that's dead. Amen. Amen. You bring life to something that's dead. Let me give you an example. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Have you ever felt your moment of weakness? You feel like you're, you're living out here on the streets, on the tracks is a weakness. 
Amen. You feel like I'm out here and I'm homeless. I'm drug addicted. I'm alcoholic, whatever it is. It's a weakness. Yeah. Then speak life over your weakness. And instead of complaining about what you're saying all the time, speak the word of God into your situation. The word of God is life. Let the church say amen. 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 The Bible says, let the weak say I am strong. The Bible says, let the poor say I am rich. Yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. The Bible says, if, if, if God is for me, who can be against me? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to put God's word on the situation because God's word is a life-giving word. Let the church say amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering today. Hallelujah. Ooh, y'all are making me work today. Y'all are making me work today. I'm preaching better than y'all are saying amen. Come on. <laughs> amen. Verse number nine. Verse, ni verse number nine. Watch what he says here. Verse number nine. The Lord is speaking and he says this. He says, have I not commanded you, Joshua? Have I not commanded you? Have I not commanded you, Bo? Have I not commanded you, Aaron? Have I not commanded you, Osa? Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Let the church say amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering. Oh, this is so good. This is so good to know that when I have God in my heart and I obey his word, and I stand on his word. Yes. He says, don't, you don't have to be terrified in any situation. You don't have to be discouraged in any situation. I will be with you wherever you go. Say this out loud. God is with me. God is with me. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. One more time. God is with me. God is with me. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. Wow, watch this. This is so heavy. Hallelujah. Watch this. This is so heavy. Do you realize, listen, do you realize that if you're a believer here today, that everywhere you go and you have the Holy Spirit in you, that you are the thermostat, you change the temperature in the room every time you walk in. Yes. Yes. Amen, the room could be a bunch of people complaining about stuff and you walk in and you walk in with the power of God on you and you begin to speak, man, I don't know what, to, what you guys are so down about, I got the Holy Spirit on me. I got power, I got deliverance, I got grace. I got mercy, I got goodness of God, amen. I got love, I got joy, I got peace, I got patience, kindness, goodness. I got all that stuff. The fruits of the Spirit are with me. I don't have to be down and depressed. I can trust God because he said, he will be with me wherever I go. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse number 10. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people. So Joshua got the word, get ready, we're going in. 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 We're not going to be on the outside anymore. We're going to the inside. Let the church say amen. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, get ready to go in, neighbor. Get, get ready, ready to go, go in. in. Yeah, get ready to go in. Get ready to go in. Come on, say it one more time. Are you ready to go in? Are you ready to go in? One more time. Are you ready to go in? Are you ready to go in? One more time. Are you ready to go in? Are you ready to go in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Joshua ordered his officers of the people. He told them, go through the camp and tell the people, get your supplies ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God has given you for your own possession. Let the church say amen. Amen. You will not take anything in this world if you are not ready. Come on. Let me say that one more time, church. You will not do anything in this world if you are not ready. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say prepare. 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 You've got to be prepared to go in. Let me tell you about heaven. Heaven is not a place for good people. Heaven is a place for prepared people. Yeah. Ooh, gee, I, man, yeah. I am preaching today. I don't know what's wrong with these people. I don't know, I don't know what's wrong with you guys while y'all are half asleep. That coffee and that breakfast must have been too good. <laughs> Look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah's like, yeah, that breakfast is good. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was good. Amen, amen. Yeah. Let me just tell you, church, <laughs> listen, let me just tell you. Heaven is not the place for good people. 
Jennifer's dad. Jennifer's dad is a lifelong, lifelong, what's the religion he's in? Scientologist. And Scientology teaches that if you're good enough, come on, if, you, if you're good enough in life and you're good enough to other people, yeah. amen, that you will, huh? You gotta be clear. You gotta be clear. You, you can reach a clear state in your consciousness. And then when you die, you don't have to, you don't have to come back reincarnated to go through life, keep going through life over again because you failed in some area of your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he believes that if he's good enough and re reaches a clear state, amen, that then somehow, some way, he'll reach heaven. Look at your neighbor today and say, neighbor, neighbor. or neighbor, neighbor, heaven is not for good people. Heaven is, not for good people. Heaven is for forgiven people. Heaven is, for forgiven people. Heaven is a place for people who are prepared for heaven. Let the church say amen. Yes, amen. So watch what jo Joshua is saying here. Watch what he says. So Joshua ordered his officials to go to the people, go through the camp, tell the people, get your supplies ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God has given you for your own possession. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, say this out loud. My job, My job, job is to hear, is to, hear to, do, to do, and prepare. And prepare. One more time. My job, My job is to hear, is to, hear to, do, to do, and to prepare. prepare. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. Verse number 12, here we go. But the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, remember, Numbers 32, the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you. The Lord your God has given you the rest. He has granted you this land. Your wives, your children, and your livestock may stay in the land that Moses gave you east of the Jordan, but all of your fighting men, all of your brothers in the Lord, fully armed, must cross over ahead of your brothers. You are to help your brothers until the Lord gives them rest as he has done for you. And until they too have taken possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving them. After that, everybody say after that. Yeah. Everybody say after that. Yeah. After that, you may go back and occupy your land which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you east of the Jordan towards the sunrise. Everybody say this out loud. I have to do what I have to do. Then I can do what I want to do. One more time. Say it, church. I have to do what I have to do. Then I can do what I want to do. Oh, watch this, church. Isn't it amazing that we come here, amen, there is a spiritual cohesion in this church where we all come together and lock arms side by side. Come up, come on up here, Rod. Everybody give Rod a hand as he comes. Yeah. This is volunteer number one, volunteer number one, all right? So watch what happens. We come here and we lock arms like this, in the spirit. In the physical, we're, he's working over there, I'm working over here, but we're working together to accomplish the mission of the kingdom of God to bring you the word of God. Let the amen. church say amen. 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 In the spirit, we are locking arms and walking side by side to accomplish this. Yes. I can't do this job on my own. He can't do his job on his own. We've got to do it side by side. <laughs> if I'm battling in the spirit, guess, guess what? If I'm battling in the spirit, guess who else is battling in the spirit? Yes. Yeah. Right. If, I'm, if I've got joy, guess who else has joy? If I got peace, guess who else has peace? Oh, yes. Amen. But we, there's a spiritual cohesion for us to get the work done together. Let the church say amen. 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 Come on, give them a round. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> Watch this, church. You are not called to be a lone ranger in the kingdom. Yeah. You are called to be a part of the body. Yeah, you amen. You are called to be a part of an army yes. for the Lord. Hallelujah. Where you don't have to be on your own, Barbaro. You don't have to be on your own, Jeremiah. You got brothers and sisters who love you, who will walk with you, lock arms with you, and get the purpose of the kingdom done. Let the church say amen. amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Watch what he says here. Watch what he says here. Verse number 16. Then they answered Joshua. The people of Israel answered Joshua, and this is what they said, the leaders. They said, whatever you have commanded us, 
we will do. Come on, church. Let me say that one more time. The leaders told Joshua, when he told the leaders, go tell the people. The leaders turned around and told Joshua, whatever you command us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you and be with you. Amen. So we will Amen. obey you. Only may the Lord God be with you as he was with Moses. Let the church say amen. amen. Let me tell you, church, being a leader is not easy. But just as we said a moment ago, your job is to live up to the calling which you have received in the Lord. Watch this. Do what you are called to do. Not everyone will understand. Not everyone will approve. Not everyone will applaud you. Not everyone will affirm you. Not everyone will celebrate you. Not everyone will support you. Not everyone will stay with you. Not everyone will encourage you. But your job is to do what you are called to do. Let the church say amen. amen. Come on, you guys love Jesus this morning? Yes! All right, let me finish the word here. Let me finish. Watch this. Verse number 18. Whoever rebels against you and your word and does not obey your words, whatever you command them will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. Let the church say amen. Amen. Oh, church, I wanted to say something to you this morning. This is so powerful. When you got the Spirit of God, when you got the Word of God, when you've got the command of God alive in you, let me tell you what you have. Amen. You have a faith that can move mountains. Somebody say amen. amen. You have a shout that can bring down walls. Yes. Amen. You have a joy that cannot be explained. Amen. You have a peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. You have a grace that is sufficient for you. Amen. You have an anointing that destroys the yoke. Amen. You have a gift that cannot be revoked. Yes. You have a destiny that cannot be stopped. Yes. You have mercies that are new every day. Yes. You have the strength of the Father, the grace of the Son, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say this out loud. Everybody say this out loud. I can do all things, do all through, things. Christ through Christ who gives me strength. One more time, church. I can do all things, do all through, things. Christ through Christ who gives me strength. One more, church. I can do all things, do all through, things. Christ through Christ who gives me strength. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering this morning. Hallelujah. Wow. Okay, turn to your right. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Go to your right. Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to finish right here. How many of you know that those who are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God? Those who are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. That's Romans 8, Romans 8, 14. Amen? Amen. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, in other words, you're leading, you're hearing the Word of God and you're letting it lead you, those are the sons of God. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 11, let me finish right here. Look what it says. Verse number 11. In Him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of Him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of His will. In order, verse number 12, that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. Verse number 13. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Let the church amen. say amen. amen. Read verse number 11 one more time. In him you were also chosen. Look at your neighbor this morning and say, neighbor, neighbor. you've been selected you've been to be a child of God, to be a child of God, to hear the word of God, to hear the word of God, and then to do the word of God. Word of God. Woo, Jesus, hallelujah. Let me say that one more time. You have been chosen to hear the word of God, to do the word of God, and then to have God's blessing in your life. 
Come on, give the Lord a clap already tonight. Hallelujah. Everybody stand up right where you are. Everybody stand up right where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo.